What is going on everyone, my name is Codemore and welcome back to Electronics episode 26. Now before I begin today, I just want to say that I'm really sorry for my lack of videos. I know it's been months since I've released videos and I apologize for any promises that I've broken uh, to people out there. I do feel really bad about that, but I think that I finally came to the realization that I just simply don't have enough time uh, to make these videos on a, a regular basis. Uh, so I do really, really apologize for that. I am going to still try my best to complete these series that I have going, uh, if not fast, at least slowly. That way, for people watching these videos in the future, at least my content will be complete for them. But for those of you who are sticking with me, I really do appreciate it, and again, I apologize to anyone who I've broken a promise on. So, episode 26 of Electronics, we are going to be talking all about digital logic gates. Now, this is probably one of the most important topics in this series. You must absolutely understand logic gates in order to continue along with building an 8-bit computer, as well as to be able to understand the rest of this series. And in fact, logic gates are actually really simple. In fact, they're one of the most simple components used in every single computer for the most part. Now, I'm going to be showing you six of the most common logic gates that we will be using. And in order to explain this, I'm just going to begin with the first one. We are going to start off by describing the NOT gate. Now, a logic gate basically takes one or more inputs, and it gives you one or more output values, and it does something to the inputs to get you your output. So if we were to draw the NOT gate as a, uh, a schematic symbol, we would have our input coming into this triangle with a little circle on top, and then our output leaving it we would have some digital value, again, digital meaning a zero or a one, zero meaning no voltage, one meaning voltage, and it'll give us some output value, which will also be a zero or a one, low or high. So if we send a low value in for the input of our NOT gate, so if we send in a zero, what the NOT gate will do is it'll give us the opposite of that value, so it'll actually spit out a one. And if we send it in a 1, if we send in high voltage, then it will spit out a 0. It'll give us a low value instead. And we can represent this with something called a truth table, which I have here. Basically, it lists all of the possible inputs. In the case of a NOT gate, it only has a single input, which I've labeled A. So if I pass a value of 0, a low value, into my NOT gate, I will get out a 1. And if I pass in a 1 as the input, I will get out a 0. And that's it. That is what a NOT digital logic gate does. And NOT gates are used almost everywhere in electronics, and there'll be plenty of examples of it throughout this series. So let's move on to a slightly more complicated logic gate. Next up is the OR gate. Now if we were to draw this as a schematic diagram, first of all, it has two inputs. Uh, in fact, an OR gate can have as many inputs as you want, just as long as you have at least two. But most commonly, you'll see a two input OR gate, and then the symbol kind of looks like this. It's like a curve, and then it goes up into a point. And then we have a single output value. So let's call this input A, we'll call this input B, and then this is our output. Now an OR gate will output a one, it'll output a high value if either A or B or both of them are a one, if they're high. So let's say we pass in a 0 for A and a 0 for B, low and low. Well, the OR gate is just going to give us a 0. Nothing is really going to change here. However, let's say we send in a 0 for input A and a 1 for input B. Since B is 1, at least one of our inputs is a 1, then the output will always be a 1. The same thing in the opposite direction. If we send in a 1 for A and a 0 for B, then we will have a 1 for the output because at least one of our inputs was a 1. And if both of our inputs are a 1, well, that's really easy. They're both 1, so the output must be 1. And that is all an OR gate does. The only time the output of the OR gate is a 0 is if all of the inputs of the OR gate is also a 0. Anything else will give you a 1. Now let's move on to the AND gate. So, the AND gate. And I'm going to try not to go too, too slowly because there are plenty of resources on this stuff. And really, it's just looking at a table and kind of remembering what each one of them does. So the AND gate schematic symbol, again, we're going to have two inputs this time. And we have this sort of flat end that goes up into a weird curve. And we have a single output value. So we have input A, input B, and then an output. Now the AND gate, it will only produce a 1, a high output, if input A and input B and all the other inputs are also 1s. 
So if we send in a zero and a zero, so zero for A, zero for B, we're gonna get out a zero. If we send in a zero for A and a one for B, well, we're still gonna get a zero because both input A and input B were not one. Same thing for the next case. If input A is one and input B is zero, well, they're both not one, so we're gonna get a zero out. Finally, if we send in a one for both A and B, well, A and B are both one, so we're going to get a one for our output. And that's all there is to an AND gate. Next, we have one of my favorite gates, and that is the XOR gate, otherwise known as the exclusive OR gate. I'm just gonna write that here in case uh, you might see this wording for this gate, exclusive OR. And as you might've guessed, it is quite similar to a normal OR gate. And the symbol actually looks very similar. So if we draw the normal OR gate symbol, which is kind of this uh, curvy piece here, all we do is add another line at the back and we have an exclusive OR gate. Let me begin by writing down the truth table for a normal OR gate. Remember, an OR gate is only a one for an output if at least one of the inputs was also a one. So here we have a zero, one, one, and then in a normal OR gate, we would also have a one. But an exclusive OR actually makes it so that it's strictly one or the other and not both. So if we have both inputs as one, then we're also going to get a zero here. So exclusive OR means it must be input A or input B and not both of them at the same time. All right, great, so let's move on. The next two gates I'm gonna show you, I'm not gonna use very much, if at all, in this series, but I figured that I would show them to you just in case you see them along your journey. So we are going to cover the NAND gate next. And if we remember the schematic symbol for the AND gate, we had uh, two inputs and then we had this weird curvy thing and then we had our output. Well, the only difference for the NAND schematic symbol is that we have a little circle on the top here. Now you'll recognize this circle from our NOT gate. Remember the NOT gate was a triangle with a circle on top. So the way I think of this is NOT AND. It's the opposite of AND. And well, that's exactly what it is. So in a normal AND gate, if we passed in a zero and a zero, we would get a zero out as well. But a NAND gate reverses that. So instead of getting a zero, we're gonna get a one out. Same for the next two cases. In a normal AND gate, zero and one, or a one and a zero, will also get you a zero. But a NAND gate reverses that, so you'll get a one for both of these cases. And as you might have guessed, a normal AND gate would give us a one when we passed in one one, but of course a NAND gate inverses that, and we get a zero instead. So you can actually think of this NAND gate as basically an AND gate, as we have here, going into a NOT gate. Remember the first gate that I showed you. It simply reverses the output of an AND gate. All right, let's move on to the very final logic gate. Finally, we will have the NOR gate. And I'm gonna go through this one really, really fast because I'm sure that you can guess kind of what this one is gonna be. If we draw our normal OR schematic symbol, which is kind of this thing again. Well, the only difference is we have this little circle on top. And that circle almost always means inverse your normal output. Essentially, put the output of an OR gate through a NOT gate almost. I think of this as a NOT OR gate. So if we have zero and zero sent in, an OR gate would usually give us a zero, but instead a NOR gate will give us a one. And real quickly, these other two cases, if we have a zero and a one, an OR gate would usually give us a one, but a NOR will give us a zero. Same exact thing for this case. As you might've noticed, the order of the inputs does not matter for any of these logic gates. So input zero one is the same thing as input one zero. It doesn't matter the order that you put the inputs in. Anyways, the pattern will continue. A normal OR gate would give us a one here. So we're gonna put a zero as the output for a NOR gate. And that's it. Those are the six logic gates that I'm gonna show you today. Again, you only need to know the first four for this series really well. Now I'm gonna drop a really quick schematic using an exclusive OR gate, and this schematic is actually gonna have a problem in it, and it's gonna be a very important problem that we're gonna be avoiding for the rest of this series. So even if you don't wanna watch this part because you already know about logic gates, I want you to kinda of watch through and see if you can pick out the problem in this circuit, and I will explain it at the end. So first, let's start off with our power supply. Here, we're gonna have 
the positive end of our power. And let's take this positive power and let's feed it to two single pull, single throw switches. Just normal switches. If they're off, they're not connected to anything. If they're on, they get connected to this positive power. So those will be our two manual inputs by that switch. And we are going to run these through to an exclusive OR gate. So let me draw this very poor depiction of an exclusive OR gate symbol. And we will take our output, and I'm going to lead this into a resistor because I'm going to go straight in to one of my LEDs. And this LED will represent the output. If it's on, it means the output is a 1 or high. And if the LED is off, then the output was a 0 or low. And then, of course, this end of the LED is going to connect on down to the ground source. So a very, very simple circuit. We have two inputs here that are just going to be simple switches that lead into a single exclusive OR gate, and the output will lead to an LED so that we can actually see the output. Now let's go ahead and build this and see if we can see a problem with this circuit. And the problem might not be very obvious. Now there are many different manufacturers for exclusive OR gates. In fact, there's many manufacturers for any type of integrated circuit really. But I'm going to be using the HD74LS86 exclusive OR chip. And you'll notice if we take a look at the schematic diagram of it, there's actually four individual exclusive OR gates inside of this chip but I'm only going to be using the very first exclusive OR gate. And you will notice that this chip has a ground and a VCC, a positive voltage source input. And that is because this chip actually has to be powered in order for any of these exclusive OR gates to work. And oftentimes when you see schematics like the one that we drew, we didn't show the exclusive OR gate being powered. But in practice, when we use a chip like this, the chip actually has to be powered separate from the inputs and the outputs of the exclusive OR gates that we're using inside of the chip. Anyways, looking more at this data sheet for my chip, you'll see that it even lists the function table, and this looks exactly like our truth table that we have. So it's saying if we have a low input for both A and B, then the output will also be low. If one or the other is high, then the output will also be high, but if both of the inputs are high, then our output will be low. So it actually shows the truth table about what each of those individual exclusive OR gates does. And finally, we can go down a little bit more and we'll see the recommended operating conditions. So I'll see that my supply voltage should be 5 volts. So I'm going to power my breadboard, I'm going to power my circuit using a 5 volt power supply. This way I don't damage the chip, even though it does say up here that maximum 7 volts should still be okay for the chip, but you kind of want to avoid the maximums. So let's go build this circuit. So as you can see, I've already put my exclusive OR chip into my breadboard here. Again, this chip has four exclusive OR gates in it, but I'm only going to use one for this experiment. So I know that pin one is going to be one of my inputs. Pin two is going to be the other input. And pin three is the output of that first exclusive OR gate. So I'm going to connect my resistor to pin number three. If I can do this below the camera, my setup is not the greatest. And I'm going to plug that right over here to an empty slot on my breadboard. So from the output of my exclusive OR gate is my resistor. And then that is going to lead to the longer leg of my LED. So I'm going to put my LED there. And then the shorter leg is going to go to this little blue wire that I already have set up to ground. And I should have mentioned, but I already connected my exclusive OR chip to power. Uh, the pin number 7 to my ground and pin number 14 to my positive 5 volts. Now I know that I drew two simple switches in my schematic diagram, but I'm just going to use two wires that I'm going to plug and unplug from the power rails uh, as my inputs. This way we can demonstrate the problem that a single switch would have. So I just have my two wires going into my inputs, and I'm going to connect them both to the ground rail for now, like so. And now I'm going to connect, I'm going to turn on my power, that way things will start to operate. Alright, so my breadboard now has power going to it, and as you can see, the light is off because I'm sending in both inputs as zeros, and it might be a little hard to see. They're both onto the ground rail there. So exclusive OR says our output should be zero, and that is true. Now if I move one of the inputs to become a 1, if I connect one of these inputs to positive power, positive 5 volts, we get a 1 on our output because the exclusive OR gate says that 1, 0 means an output of 1. 
And if I do the opposite, meaning if I plug this one back in, again, zero, zero, means we get a zero for the output. And I plug the other one to plus five volts, we get still an on signal, a one signal. And if both of them are plugged into the plus five volt, uh, if both of them are plugged into the plus five volts, if we have a one, one for the input, our output is zero. And that is true, our LED is off. Now you'll notice something kind of special here. When I disconnect one of these wires, um, especially if one of them is connected to ground rather, so if I disconnect this wire, this is completely not connected and the output is still saying it's a one. And this is where we have to be really careful when we're designing a circuit. Because if this was happening in our 8-bit computer, we would get some really strange results, especially with more complicated integrated circuits and not just logic gates. Basically, the chip doesn't really know if this is a zero or a one, and therefore it just kind of has to guess. In this case, it guessed a one. And if I connect this to positive power, well, of course it stays a one, and I disconnect this one, then it turns off this time. So now when one of them is disconnected, I get a zero on the output. So we can modify our circuit schematic that we drew up to use a single pole double throw switch, meaning that the off position of the switch is actually connected to ground instead of nothing, and the on position is actually connected to plus five volts instead of nothing. So firstly, I'm going to sort of erase the switch portion of this because I'm gonna change things around a little bit. So I'm just gonna draw my switches a little bit differently, that way I can actually fit them in the schematic a little bit better. I'm going to draw my switch for my first input here up. And if this is the off position, then I'm actually going to have that switch connect directly to my ground source. This way, when the switch is off, it is actually sending a ground signal, a zero signal, to the exclusive OR gate. And then, of course, when it turns on, it'll uh, flip on to this little piece of wire and connect to positive voltage. And my second switch would be the exact same thing. I'm just going to draw it differently again. That way it's easier for my schematic to see. That'll connect to ground when it's off, and if not, it'll connect to this wire here, which will lead to positive voltage. This way we're never, or at least for a very, very short amount of time, we are never not connected to ground or positive five volts. We're always gonna be connected to one or the other. That way we have a predictable state of our exclusive OR chip. So that's it for today's tutorial, everyone. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions at all, please ask it down below in the comments because this is an extremely important topic that you have to understand to be able to follow along with the rest of the series. I'll do my best to start looking at the comments on my videos again, especially these newer ones. But if I don't get the chance to answer your question, hopefully someone in our community here can help you out and answer that question for you. And there's also plenty of resources online that you can look up for these logic gates. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.